Hi, I'm Steve Dale. Welcome to another Vitabone training tip. Not only are you adding a new best friend to the family, you're getting a sight hound. The instruction book might be a little thicker than for some other breeds, according to trainer Dennis Damon. This is a very natural kind of dog, but it's a very ancient kind of dog, you mm -hmm. know? And um, they're, they're wonderful. They do need exercise, and they do need creative outlets for the things that they like to do, which is to hunt and chase and, um, and seek things out and so forth. I think it's very important that you provide those kinds of activities, not necessarily hunting, but hunting-type behaviors. So, so hiding, find, hiding, hiding treats seek. in yes, the house. Hide and yes, hiding treats, hide and seek, uh, anything like that where they can operate um, in that way. They're also um, famous for going to dog parks, and they're into great economy of energy. You know, you'll see a sighthound will get dogs to chase him, but he'll only run fast enough to stay ahead of them. He won't turn it on. If he does turn it on, it leaves everybody in the dust and so forth. So they're very interesting in, in how they uh, pace themselves. Damon says when using positive reinforcement techniques on sighthounds, favorite rewards might be just a little different than in other breeds. You need to take breed characteristics into account. For instance, when you have scent hounds, beagles, um, bassets, dogs like that, uh, they want to sniff. That's a big payoff for them. So sometimes people going on a training walk, uh, when they get near the part that they know the dog is really going to be interested in, they have them do a few things for them, and then they release them, go sniff. And that's can be the a, best reward It can be a possible. huge reward yeah. for a scent hound. And know? food. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You know, for a lot of them, if you have, can it be food? It can be food, and uh, many of them are very much into food. Or uh, you take their favorite toy concealed on your person, and when the time is ripe and you want to make an impression with them, just whip it out. You know, dogs love it if you can produce stuff. You know. Uh huh. Uh, which is why we always advise our clients, you know, to have both food and toys stashed in every room of their house, out in the trunk of the tree, screw top jars for the treats and so forth. But, uh, you know, just have stuff in the areas that you might want them. When the dog wants to be brilliant, be right there to support it, you know. And pretty soon, all of this becomes habitual and just becomes a part of your relationship. So you're not necessarily tied to food forever uh, to get things done or to toys or things like that, but they're just very helpful adjuncts. So, you know, what is good for this dog may not be so indicated so much for another dog and so on. And, and it's really the owner's task to uh, ferret those things out and see what, what will contribute more to the relationship uh, for this particular dog, you know, and what are, what are his limitations, if any, as we view them right now, mm -hmm. and uh, how can we work with that and increase his possibilities and increase our just general happiness with everything. Yes, let's increase our general happiness with everything. That sounds like a good plan. And for those treats, make sure you use something your dog will really love. And yes, I know with sighthounds, that can be a bit more challenging. One example, Vitabone Chewies. You can find more training tips at vitabone.com learn. I'm Steve Dale.